Welcome back everybody. The fact that you're seeing this is proof that I officially survived exam week and I have a little bit of spare time to showcase my new eight tick shifting floor. In this video, I will not only show you how to make my fastest shifting floor so far, but I will also show you a way to stop witches from despawning when they're going in a bubble column all the way to your killing chamber in the sky. So make sure to stick around to see how to do it. So for demonstration, we have the new 8 tick shifting floor on the left. We have my old 12 tick shifting floor in the middle and we have ill mangoes on the right. And if I all activate them at the exact same time, you can see that the left one is quicker. So this is what it looks like when assembled in three platforms. And you can see that it is very similar to the previous design, but it is actually very much faster as you can see. The problem with making an efficient shifting floor comes to the tripwire properties itself. And so once a witch spawns, it activates it. And you can see that there's no problem with the shifting, but it also activates once the witch falls through. And so there's a second unnecessary shift. And that is very bad for us because while the block is shifting, this spawning spot is invalid. So every time a witch spawns, it invalidates the whole slice for twice as long. To fix this problem, we're going to have to make it so this piston fires first when the witch spawns. But when the witch actually leaves the tripwire, we need both of these pistons to fire at the exact same time. So the platform doesn't move. And we can see over here, I made the example. So if we fire the pistons one after the other, it shifts fine. But if we activate both at the exact same time, the platform doesn't move. So with this knowledge, we need to replace this node block with another block that has special properties. The properties are as follows. The block needs to activate faster than it deactivates. And in technical terms, it means that the initial delay needs to be lower than the delay length. But we actually need an exact delay for it to work. So if we look on the left side, the delay length would be equal to six because we have three observers that each have a delay of two ticks. And on the right side, it is two. So six minus two. That means our delay length needs to be four over here. And because we need a four tick difference, that means that this block absolutely has to have zero tick initial delay. So now we know exactly what we need, but is there even a block in the game that has these properties? This is the perfect opportunity for me to show off a Java algorithm I've been developing on the side. So if we start up the program and look into the console, we can see that there are several options. So the component constructor has three variables, the name, the initial delay, and the delay length. So before we display any list of components, we need to order them depending on our use case. So let's open up the console and click on the option organize order. And by default, they're in lexicographical order, which is basically just alphabetical order. But once we get the list, we want to immediately see the component with the least amount of delay length. So our piston fire as soon as possible. So order by delay length. But we still don't know which component has a quicker initial delay than the delay length. So let's exit this menu and go back to our options. And now we can open the filter options. And the filter we're looking for is this one. So it's the initial delay lower than the delay length. If I click enter, we have two results. And since we are in order of delay length, the first one is going to be the lowest delay length. And it's going to have an initial delay lower than that. So what that means is through all of these components, the redstone lamp is the only one that has the properties we're looking for. To see this happen in game, we're going to use a redstone lamp with a lever on it and do slash tick freeze. And you can see that even though ticks are frozen, I can still activate it. So this is proof that it is a zero tick activation. And if I deactivate and slowly pick up the ticks, so slash tick step one, two, three and four. And for the ones that want to try this design out, but already build my previous design, don't worry, you don't have to rebuild it. You can simply modify the one that you just built and I'm going to go through it with you. So we're going to start on the side and remove this node block and observer. And we're going to add our redstone lamp with an observer that looks into it. And there you go. That's it for this side. 
And then on the other side, you want to remove this observer and this node lock and replace them with trapdoors, and you're done. All you need to do is replicate this through all the slices and all the platforms, and you now have an eight tick. And to show you it works, I'm gonna come over here and place a witch, and you can see it fell through. Oh, and don't forget to come place your magma blocks. It's really important. Now, a little bit of side information is that this pattern appears to be producing more rates than the previous one. I can't really tell you why, but the pattern is five slabs away from our platform. And then you just follow up with the stairs and this apparently just gives us more rates. Might have been a coincidence when I tested it out, but you're free to test it yourself. Now for players that don't want to dig an entire perimeter and stay in the sky for their witch farms, I think I found the perfect alternative. Now traditionally what you would do is funnel all the witches into a single water stream and then have the witches hit these magma blocks to reset their despawn timer to 10 seconds. And once they get hit, they get pushed by other witches inside the bubble column and go all the way more than 128 blocks into the sky. But the problem is that it takes time for them to reach that destination and there is plenty of time for them to despawn. But don't worry, I got the solution for you. You see, since they drink fire res potions, we can't damage them again with magma box. So what we need is something that damages them that they can't be immune to while they're going up. And so that's exactly what we have here. It is with the feature of the barely utilized puffer fish that we're achieving this because puffer fish are hostile to pretty much every mob in the game. And so if it encounters a mob, it's gonna hit it and poison it. And since the puffer fish poison only lasts a few seconds, you can have multiple puffer fish every X amount of blocks. So the witch always gets damaged and never despawns. And since it's poison damage and not fire damage, witches are not immune to it. So if we start our flow of witches, you can see that they first take damage on the magma blocks, drink a fire res, and then when this witch gets pushed, it takes poison damage, and it's just enough time to reset her despawn timer. So with this method, I think we completely remove the possibility of the witch despawning while it's going up, but still keep in mind that since it relies on other witches pushing it, it can still very well despawn over here. But I think making it get damaged through the bubble column is going to significantly reduce the despawn rates. Now placing the puffer fish is a bit tedious, so I am going to help you set it up. All right, so first thing you want to do is make your bubble column and at what level you want your puffer fish, you will put a floor for a minecart runway. And so let's build it like this. And on the last block, you're going to want to replace it with a trap door like this. And now we can place our minecart. So just place rails like this with a minecart. And we want to have a puffer fish inside before it gets lodged. So let me put a little bit more space back here and place our puffer fish. And we're going to directly start pushing the minecart. So push it. And now our perfect fish is inside of it. And we're going to place our water so it doesn't drown. Or reverse drowning, I guess. And now we can complete the setup by removing the rails and extra blocks over here. Make sure the minecart is fully lodged into the trapdoor. And place a block over it. And now we can just place our water back like this. And you can see that the minecart is going to float at the top and is going to get stuck on this block. And we can place our other blocks. And this is your entire setup. But just to make sure it works, let's get some witches and make sure our difficulty is on. Yeah. And if I place a witch, you can see that it gets attacked by the puffer fish. And there's no cooldown on it. So every witch I'm going to put is going to get attacked no matter what. And honestly, since the witch despawn timer is 10 seconds, you don't need to put that many puffer fish. Just make sure you put a puffer fish near the entrance, near the middle, and near the end, and you should be fine. That's gonna be it for today. I really like creating stuff with barely utilized mechanics in the game. 
and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. But unfortunately, due to time restraints, I don't have the time to test everything that I'm creating, so it will be up to you guys to test these. And as of my Java algorithm, no, I'm not going to be sharing it in this video. Simple reason is that the main goal of it is to make a sequential delay calculator and that option is for another video so I do not want to spoil it for you guys so you'll have to wait. But thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.